there are some obvious things that can suck that fuel dry. Here's what they are. Write these, write these down. Unfettered sin and addictions can suck the fuel right out of you. Disobedience to God. You know, when God is telling you to do something and you're just saying, no, God, man, that is a strain because you're, you're kicking against the goad, so to speak. You're, you're fighting something that you're supposed to be doing. Man, that, that's hard. That, <laughs> you can use up some fuel doing that. The other thing, stagnancy, not moving forward, just staying in one place can suck the fuel. Well, that doesn't make sense because you think idling stagnancy, that would preserve fuel. Well, in, in spiritual life, no, it's actually the opposite. You're meant to go. You're not meant to just idle. You're meant to be productive. You're meant to go and you're meant to do stuff. You're not meant to just sit there and idle. Because if you do, it drains and sucks the fuel right out. Okay, those are some obvious signs. There's one last thing as far as fuel that you've got to have. It hits it right here. Ephesians 5, 8. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, here's the fuel right here. Here's the fire. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is something that's a little bit amazing. Is there is some strong drink that comes from God, that we call His Holy Spirit, that is like fuel for your soul. And even when you've got all the other basics going right, I'll tell you what, this is something that you need to have and will get you through the times whenever it is very, very rough. Let's look at the first time that they took, the believers took some of this strong drink. Because then, actually this is Acts 2 and verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. There's that word again. Tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Now try to picture that for a second. That is about the most bizarre thing that I cannot picture that. You want to know honestly what picture that I have in my mind when I read that scripture? I think one of the guys, you remember that old rock band Kiss? Remember those guys with their face painted and they had those really long tongues that they stick out and just, you know, like that? You remember those guys? I think of like one of those tongues like on fire and I don't know, it's a really, really weird picture. It's probably not what it looked like in any way, shape, or form, but that's about the only thing I can think of. It said, but that came, tongues of fire that separated came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so basically here for the first time is the believers got a little bit of strong drink. Strong energy drink to fuel them up. It wasn't Red Bull. It was the Holy Spirit. Okay, now let's, let's take a look at this. What's so funny about this is whenever this was so changing to these people, that if you read down in verse 13, you see all these amazing things, but since some people looked at these believers that were filled with the Holy Spirit, that got this fuel, that got this fire, and says somehow or made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. <laughs> they actually thought that they had too much strong drink. They were amazed. They were freaked out by that. But here's the scenario right here. The early Christians, he was going cool. They'd been with Jesus, saw him crucified, resurrected, talked to them said, I want to promise you something that's going to come later. And then he went to heaven. They had the truth with them. They had Jesus. They were together. They were hanging out. They were praying. Things were going really, really well. But they were just sitting there, hanging around, kind of in park mode. Kind of in idle mode. And then all of a sudden, and they were wondering, what do we do? What do we do with our life? And then all of a sudden, they had this amazing experience when they get a little bit of fuel. They get a little bit of fire. And then the most amazing thing started to happen. Acts 2.14, here it is right here. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my service, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun 
will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, blood before the coming and the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, what happens after they got the fuel? What happens after they got the fire? Well, first of all, they started to not have fear anymore. How do I know that? Well, because Peter stood up and he stood up in front of the crowd and he began to speak. He wasn't doing that before. One of the most fearful things that people have is public speaking. Guess what? He wasn't afraid anymore. He got up and just began to do it. That's something that the fuel did. What else did the, did the fire do? Well, first of all, it, it, it got them off their duff. It got them from just sitting there and doing nothing and saying, man, we got to get active. Great commission thing. we got to go for it. Let's get up and go. Fuel. What else did it do? Somehow it gave them some faith in something to go out and step out boldly. And we begin to see some of the most amazing miracles happen. You see, people that were sick begin to be prayed for and they're not sick anymore. Amazing, amazing stuff. What else happened? They went through endure, they went through hard, hard persecution, but they were able to endure it. Why were they able to endure it? Because they had fuel. Because they had the fire. And we also see a rapid growth. Rapid, rapid growth in the church at this point. Why? Because they had some fuel. They had some fire. The caveman, he has fire. Fuel. <laughs> to keep him going. You, as a believer, you've got to have fire. You've got to have the Holy Spirit in you. Now, this is the thing that's hard for people to understand. Is, you know, you've heard of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Most of us have heard these things. We don't serve three gods. There's only one God that we serve. There's three ways that we see Him in the Bible. Uh, you know, think of God the Creator, uh, the person that was who created the earth. We think of, think of the Son being the person of Jesus Christ. And here's what's very interesting. You know, a lot of times we'll say, you know what, is Jesus living in your heart? And, and we'll say, yes, Jesus is living in my heart. Because we say that's for someone who's asked Him into his heart. And that they're a Christ follower. And that, we understand what that means. But Jesus is not physically living in your heart. He is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. You just have a relationship with Him. But here's the thing that's freaky and what people miss. is so when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the issue of God. It's the part of God that we have right now, tangibly, with us on the earth. In fact, Jesus even said before He went to heaven, I have to go to heaven as good because, because when I go, then this other part, the Holy Spirit has come. And that has not left us. That is what we have. It's a little bit mysterious. It's really cool. But that's what we rely on. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been walking and you've been going in your life and you just feel like, man, I just feel like I, I'm not supposed to do this. Or, or I'm supposed to do this. I just have this hunch or this feeling. And then you, you throw it up to prayer. A lot of times what that is, is that may be the Holy Spirit trying to direct you. I can remember whenever I was a young, a young boy sitting in church and not really knowing a lot, but sitting there and hearing the Word of God spoken. When I heard the Word of God spoken, I could feel something inside of me that was just, it was gut wrenching. It was like just this... Like hot. And it's like I wanted to cry. And I didn't know why I wanted to cry because the words that were being spoken from the scripture were just so outstanding. And when I began to understand that, man, that was the Holy Spirit working on me in the moment. Have you ever had something like that happen? Or maybe you've been listening to, to a, a Christian song. Or you've been reading the Bible and man, you just man, you just feel this ah, something. Many times that is the Holy Spirit. That's fuel. We need that. You can ask for the Holy Spirit. You can ask God, God, I need the Holy Spirit. I need fuel. I need Him with me. The Bible talks about Him being a comforter. When you're going through something difficult, man, a comforter, I need that. Uh, it talks about one that is it's like a partner, one that goes alongside of you, walks alongside of you. Man, when we talk about the basics, that is something that we must have when we need it. He is present with you. Now look at the scripture that I read before, Isaiah 40 and verse 30. I was talking about the running and how I just pooped out. Check this out right here. Even you who are tired and weary, and yet you will fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I don't know about you guys, but there are times whenever I feel pretty weary. And I just have to say, God, I need your fire. I need you for your Holy Spirit. I need you to help me get through this thing. I need some fuel. I don't want to run out of gas. It's a basic that I need. Keep me up. Make me hot so that I can navigate this life the way it needs to. Hey, could you guys bow your heads?